there are ways to really integrate nature but not forget food production. Uh, I'm George Young, aka Farming George. I farm in South Essex near Basildon. Um, yeah, we're mixed, mixed farmers here, so we've got arable crops, um, then we're post-processing some of those and milling them into flour. We've got cattle, um, and then we've also got trees. So I think for me, trees and kind of the sensible use of trees are really, really important to how I'm trying to make my farm function. So the, the purpose of these, these tree belts is to actually link into the margins of my field. So I call them sort of wild margins. Um, the idea is that they will link to kind of a central wild habitat that goes right in the middle of my farm. Um, obviously those wild margins link into that and these tree belts link into that as well. So it, it's an ability to ensure that you've got homes for all your beneficial insects and your mammals and all those sorts of things um, really close to every other part um, of your farm. So it's really integrating nature very much into the heart of my farming system. On top of that, obviously at the moment, these trees don't look particularly big. Well, they look quite tall for, for whips, but they're not particularly well established yet. When they get well established, that's really going to be beneficial for my livestock um, coming around all these fields and ensuring that they've always got habitat and shelter. You know, if it's a really sunny day or a really cold and windy day, they've always got shelter. So the tree species, um, it's kind of important to understand kind of where this project sits. So this was me being very, very experimental um, to see what works on my farm in this field. So this field has got a huge amount of trees in it. Uh, lots of types of nuts, lots of types of fruits, some exotic fruits as well. So we've got apricots, um, peaches, nectarines in here to see if they function. We've got almonds in here. We've also got some kind of native, um, more tree species, yeah, uh, woodland, woodland style species, and also um, willow in here as well. So. The aim is really to see what functions well in my own microclimate and then choose that to roll out across the whole farm. So it was quite an experimental project, um, but based on the fact that worst case scenario, the trees are gonna grow up, uh, be a really amazing habitat and really beneficial from an ecological point of view and from a livestock point of view, not necessarily with, with a huge focus on what I'm gonna be able to harvest fruit, fruit wise yet. Um, but in the long term, the fruit will then become important in its own right. Most of your insects will only venture out around about 20 meters from a margin and there's a big drop off after that. So you often hear in arable farming context you hear about desertification which essentially means you have these gigantic great big arable fields you know 100 200 acre fields that you'll see especially in the southeast and there's no way for insects to make their way to the middle of that field because they've got no reason to to be there. If instead you ensure that all of your fields are relatively narrow, so my fields here are 36 metres wide within the context of this agroforestry field, still functions very well from an arable per, uh, point of view, your machinery still works very well in that system, but it also then means that you ensure that your insects will venture out and be in the middle of that, that kind of little micro field within the bigger context of the farm. So it's trying to eliminate desertification and get nature embraced into every single part of my farm. The trees here were planted either a month ago or sorry, a year and a month ago. Uh, so they've not been in very long. Um, on the whole, they've done pretty well. There've been a couple of things that have been disappointing. So willows for some reason didn't go in very nicely, but I don't think the quality of the trees was that good. And they went in in an incredibly wet, wet, horrible uh, situation. So their establishment wasn't ideal. It's just one of those things. Um, but I've been really pleased by a lot of these kind of, uh, the bigger kind of, um, rootstock fruit trees that went in. A lot of them seem to have done really well. Obviously the occasional one dies, that's just what happens. And there have been some unexpected problems. So um, badgers, which we have an awful lot of on this farm, have been quite a pain in kind of, I think you end up with voles or mice or something like that in the roots of the trees, which isn't a problem. It's a problem when the badgers come and uproot those uh, rodents. So that has been a bit of a problem. Um, but on the whole, they, they've established pretty well, yeah. So as it happens, my farm is essentially two fields deep. We've got the field at the top, which is better land, and then our marshland at the bottom. Because it's two fields deep, it works very usefully to carve essentially a bit of the top field and a bit of the bottom field out and create this wild seam through the middle. So um, it's essentially gonna get uh, left to kind of wild up on its own and be carefully managed with different types of livestock. 
Um, we will probably put in a few little interesting features to try and attract certain species of ecology in there. Um, and also I am planning on planting a few trees along the edge because I'm trying to essentially enrich the seed bank that exists on my farm. One of the interesting things that happens when you start leaving corners and leaving edges and not going out and mowing them regularly or anything like that, what you're allowing is that when birds fly about having eaten some seeds and put them out, there's a chance for those seeds to actually grow into something. So by leaving wild areas and by enhancing kind of the seed bank on the farm, I'm hoping to get a huge amount more foodstuffs for birds and for mammals and all the other kind of um, animals that call my farm home either all year round or also kind of transitory when they come over from, you know, when they're migrating birds or anything like that. Um, so that wild seam is a really, really fundamental thing I'm working on at the moment. Frustratingly, getting any funding for that sort of project since I'm not in an AONB and since I'm not 500 hectares plus in what I'm actually looking to do means there's no actual funding available for it that I've found so far. Um, so it's trying to kind of grab little bits of money from here and there and, and make the project happen in that way. My idea is that there are ways to really integrate nature, but not forget food production. So much of though I've said at the moment, I'm not necessarily worried about harvesting the fruit and nuts from this area. My overall plan in the long term is exactly to do that. So I'm not foregoing land and putting it down just to nature recovery. I'm actually putting it into something that works really well for nature, but also can work for humans. So it's kind of looking at it and saying, there's a, there's a middle ground which works really well for ecology on the farm and really well for food production. And that's the balance that I'm trying to strike uh, here in Fobbing. Hey.